emotional burst of sunshine, it's Ashley. Since it is finally March, we are all about some March madness. No, before you ask, I don't follow sports. However, in the state of Kentucky, which is where I live, um, March Madness is a big deal because, you know, everybody's all about them Kentucky Wildcats. So, today I decided I'm going to celebrate March Madness with a Kentucky Wildcat University of Kentucky cake. So, in the big blue spirit, I'm wearing a Kentucky Wildcat shirt, which you can't, uh, you can't see. But I'm wearing a Kentucky shirt, and we're going to make a Kentucky cake that is also blue on the inside because we believe blue in Kentucky. And although I don't follow sports, I'm still a good sport. I'll wear Kentucky and I'll rock Kentucky and I'll represent because that's where mama's from. Let me disclaim, I am not a professional cake baker. I am not a professional cake decorator. You will see mistakes. You will see me struggle. <laughs> kind of learn as I go and I'm kind of winging it as I go. So you're not learning from a professional. So take everything I say with a, a grain of salt because I'm not a professional. I'm just winging it. I'm just having a good time. We're all just here to have a good time. Let's be a burst of sunshine and have a good time, why don't we? So go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new here so you can see every time I post a new video. And let's just get into this UK, Kentucky, University of Kentucky, Wildcat, Basketball, March Madness. Oh, go Big Blue cake. <laughs> Start with two boxes of cake mix. I'm going to use white because I plan to color it royal blue because, you know, Kentucky. So I'm going to take some royal blue gel icing color. I like the gel. It colors really good and it doesn't change the consistency of the cake or make it taste funky like it has food coloring in it, which liquid can do. So once you get it to the desired color of your cake, of course I'm doing blue, but whatever cake you're doing, you do you boo. I'm going to take my sheet pan and a lot of people ask me every time I make a sheet cake what size sheet pan I use. I got this at Walmart. It's 11 inches by 15 inches. It says it serves about 35. So this is the size pan I use for two boxes of cake mix. So I would normally put parchment paper down but I'm out at the current moment so I'm just going to spray it down with some cooking spray and I'm going to pour my two boxes of pre-colored cake mix into the pan and bake according to package instructions. Now, while that's baking, I'm going to prepare my UK template. I just printed this off of Google, and I'm going to cut it out um, around the edges, you know, just the parts I want to trim into the cake. It doesn't have to be perfect. Mine clearly is not. And then I'm going to set that aside. Once the cake has cooled, I'm going to flip it out, and boom, look how blue. Now I'm going to lay my UK image down on my cake. Now the reason I have it face down is because the bottom edges of the cake usually have the cleanest edges because they're the parts that were down in the pan. And so I wanted that to be the top and bottom of my cake. So I did flip this upside down. So the top of my cake has that nice beautiful clean edge from the bottom of the cake. I did not trim the dome off of this cake. However, I highly suggest that you do because I did later regret that when my cake got a little bit wonky. I don't always trim my cakes. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. This time I did not and I did severely regret it. Now I'm going to just flip this around the other way so again the bottom of the cake, the base of it, is very structurally sound with the, with the hard clean edge. So I'm just going to trim around the UK image just like I did on the other side. And now we have our two layers of cake. You can trim these in half again so you can put another layer of icing in the middle. I did not but I found that there was a very large cake to very little icing ratio so I definitely probably would suggest if you're going to make this size cake to maybe cut these layers in half and then put another layer of icing in it so you have three layers of icing in total. So I'm going to pick up the bottom piece of my cake and I'm going to transfer it to my cake board. I just use a flat scraper to transfer it over. And I'm going to just put some buttercream frosting onto my bottom layer of cake and fill it so I can get ready to stack my cake. Now, as you can see, I had some technical difficulties with my frosting and it was a little bit on the softer, runnier side. Um, it, it done its job, I guess, but I definitely, the consistency was off of my buttercream. And I mean, it happens sometimes, they're not always perfect. So once I get a layer of buttercream on, I'm going to stack the other cake onto it. And then I'm going to buttercream it Again, I'm going to do my crumb coat. Now, if your buttercream is a little bit soft like mine, you may have to refrigerate it first before you start your crumb coat so the top piece doesn't slide off. And now, let's be clear, I, I hate a crumb coat. It's like miserable, mine looks awful. So I put it in the fridge after I got the ugly crumb coat done and I made a fresh batch of buttercream that turned out 
much better. And the crumb coat doesn't have to look beautiful anyways. It's just a crumb coat. It's just holding the crumbs in. I'm going to go back in with this coat of frosting. That's the actual right consistency that it should be. And I'm just going to kind of clean it up and smooth it out and make it look a little bit more like a UK symbol and a little bit less like a blob. So again, just going in with my fresh new good buttercream. And I'm just going to ice over the crumb coat, a very generous layer because I'm going to scrape it back off to smooth it out later. So again, just kind of cover the whole thing. As you can see, my crumb coat looks beautiful, but it's okay. Because like I said, no one's going to see it. It's just extra frosting down there that's going to be good when you bite into it. Now that you have this completely iced, we're going to take our spatula. I just used this small offset spatula. I got this at Walmart like a billion years ago. Um, I'm pretty sure they're pretty inexpensive. And this is like my go-to for smoothing out cakes. Um, you can use scrapers, the big bench scrapers, but I find that this little spatula works best for me. So I'm just going to go around the entire cake with my tiny little spatula and I'm just going to smooth out the cake the best I can around all the sides and edges and try to get it as close to the UK shape as possible because yeah it ain't perfect but i mean who's perfect right i'm gonna put it in the fridge and let it chill while i prepare some fondant yes i'm using store-bought fondant because i'm lazy sometimes i make marshmallow fondant but sometimes most of the time i do not i use store-bought and i just color it i always get the white because it's so much cheaper and then i color it the way i need it to be for one package out of this fondant box took this entire small container of blue coloring to get it to the right color and this is again the gel coloring it's the only food coloring i'll use and once i got it to my desired kentucky blue i'm going to roll it out to about a size where it looks like it will fit onto my cake and then i'm going to roll it up with my rolling pin and then roll it back down onto my cake i mean you guys have seen me work with fondant before you know how to do this i'm going to take my little fondant smoother and i'm going to first smooth out the top to make sure there are no air bubbles and then i'm going to slowly work my way around the sides i work from the top and work my way down and I did get some crackage and some ripping on my fondant but it's okay because I'm going to show you how to fix it and I have learned in my experience and I knew this when I did this and I don't know why I did it that when I use um, flour that my fondant always cracks and it gets real dry but if I use shortening like when I'm rolling it out I it never does that it always stays good so you can put a little shortening on your finger and rub all of the cracks but another alternative is to make a fondant paste so what I did is I took some of the scraps that I cut off the cake that didn't have any icing in it and I put it into this little bowl I added a little bit of water and a little bit of vegetable oil and mixed it up until the fondant pieces turned into a paste and then what I did is I just took my little spatula and my finger oopsie daisies and I just smoothed it over all of the cracks and imperfections in my fondant and it kind of paints it on and once it dries it's hardly noticeable so now i'm going to take some white buttercream and i'm just going to kind of outline the cakes because right now it just kind of looks like a blue monster blob so i have this just fitted with just a small round tip i do not know the number because it's like a generic tip so it doesn't have a number on it but it's just a small round tip and i'm just going to go around starting with the k since it is the top letter and i'm just going to go around the edges and outline the k so you can tell it's actually supposed to be a k once I have the K done, I'm going to go back around and do the U. And again, just taking my small tip and just putting little dollop dots all around just to make a pretty border so you can tell it actually says UK. Using the same tip, I'm going to go in and make a little bit bigger dots around the bottom just to kind of make a border to hide the imperfections in my fondant because, I mean, my fondant work isn't great. Never usually is. So what can you do but cover it up with a pretty border? So now that your border's done, your cake is done. Boom, you have a UK cake, and when you cut it open, it is gonna be bright, awesome UK blue. Go big blue. like this cake video yes I did struggle yes it looked like a hot mess for a minute but I think we recovered and although it's not perfect it still turned out all right if you like this cake if you like the University of Kentucky heck if you even like basketball in general give me a thumbs up let me know you like it and don't forget to subscribe so you can see every time I post a new video I'm posting regularly so make sure you subscribe because you never know what I got going on with these sleeves. What's up here? Who knows? Subscribe and find out, and then you can see every time I post. I hope you like this video, and I will see you next week. Bye!